Today's adventure begins by looking at the Mickey Power Pole as the recording of this Monday, March 21st, 2022. I-4 westbound moving kind of slowly. I'm heading to my fifth Disney theme park of the year and my first visit to Epcot Center for Flower and Garden Festival 2022. I'm excited. Welcome everyone. Adam the Woo here, also tagging along for Southern California Daphne. Oh, do I hear monorail? Wait, 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 wait. Hold, hold on one second. I hear, yep. It's like a sixth sense for me. There goes. Ah, oh, that's a thing of beauty right there. The monorail. Flower and Garden Festival 2022. It's been going on for a couple of weeks. But now it's my time. Now it's your time. It's our time. To eat some treats, see some See some, some flowers, flowers. <laughs> see some flowers and an assortment of other things. I am wearing an appropriate figment shirt. I also have my umbrella for the sun. Okay. You are looking very festive because it is a, like how like we're staying in the shade a little bit. Well, you're kind of like in the monorail beam shade. You are looking very springy. Let's get in there. Yes, I'm so tired. I'm inviting you to join me. <laughs> Shall you? And even though trams are back at TTC, Transportation Ticket Center, Magic Kingdom, they are not back at Epcot or Studios. This new tram route they built over here hasn't been utilized yet so far. Oh, I gotta say, Goofy looking very tall and impressive. They are a topiary Goofy in front of Spaceship Earth, a thing of beauty. And we have picked up our festival guides. This goes on through July 4th. And also, there's us underneath space. Oh, I must said space mountain. Spaceship Earth. Any, anything you're looking forward to, as far as food, food-wise, that you really want out of the book? Oh my gosh, the honey booth that we went to last year. So excited to revisit that. And then there's a new croissant in the France Pavilion. So excited to try that too. All right, honey booth and croissant, and then whatever else I'm in the app, I would like to consume. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have some, some snacks today. Yay. Lots of snacks. Cheers. And I will never turn down the opportunity to show a monorail. There he is, the man of the hour, Figment himself. Look who's there on the little berm over there is Pooh trying to get some butterflies. We're gonna go in the butterfly tent a little later too. One thing you and I share is a love of Figment. One of the really fantastic things about this festival are the topiaries. And always nice to see it under the, the shroud of Spaceship Earth. Oh yeah, and kind of a perfect beginning showing the monorail going by, kind of like the, this is a, this is like the perfect angle there with the topiaries and the, well, the flowers in the background and the lagoon and the water and everything. A little waterway with the monorail going by, Spaceship Earth off in the distance. Oh yeah. And next to my very salty Dasani water is this flat, because there's salt in Dasani, is this flatbread, lavender honey mustard marinated chicken flatbread with whipped honey, ricotta cheese, vegetables, and goat cheese. Ooh. So I'm excited about it. I usually don't eat this early. It's like only like, what, 10.45 right now or 10.30? Yeah. Something like that. And what did you end up getting? I got the cornbread. This was one of my favorite things from last year. So I'm so excited to try it again. Cornbread, <laughs> is that bacon on top? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Mm, just as good as last year. <laughs> right over there it says Honey Bistro Garden. You know, where there are, where there's honey, there's probably going to be bees. So one could say, this is a real beehive of activity. Here's another reflection of us. We are standing over near the Ratatouille. I have not been on Ratatouille. You have not been on Ratatouille. Nope. We're hoping we can procure a reservation with the Lightning Lane as well. And behind me is the Ratatouille Remy Topiary. And I'm noticing not only, well, this, this one's always here, but some of the other topiaries, some, there are some newer ones that I have not seen before, including TikTok. I've never seen the TikTok topiary before. I've seen Pan and Hook, but they're usually in different areas. A lot of the topiaries are kind of switched around to other areas. But there are a couple 
topiaries I've never seen before. So they've added some new topiaries and moved some topiaries around as well. So it's pretty neat. It's kind of the same as former years, but a little bit different, a little, a little different flavor because there's different foods too. The standby is 105 for Ratatouille. There's a little sign right over there. However, this is not popping up, or and Frozen is also not popping up. No, <laughs> not on the, yet. On the Lightning Lane. I wonder why. It's a, it's a little bit past 11. We were waiting for 11. So Lightning Lane might not be accessible for some of the key attractions. I'm not you... sure if right now it's just available for hotel guests, maybe? Possibly. Not sure. All right, I just went up to guest services and asked about the Lightning Lane as the Friendship Boat goes by. And it appears as if certain attractions are not included in the $15 Lightning Lane, like Test Track, and frozen, consider those like kind of the old timey paper fast pass, first come, first serve. So miss, missed out on those, didn't realize how to jump on those quickly. But Ratatouille is an additional fee on top of the $15. And those for resort guests, not staying in a resort today, go on at 7 a.m. Those were all booked up. And then like an hour later for other guests, I did not realize that. So basically no chance on getting any sort of fast pass, even though we got lightning lane today for Ratatouille. So kind of confusing, I should have done my homework, but them's the facts. Yeah, you never know though. Maybe 105 minutes moves quickly. Might have to wait in the standby. I'll give it some thought and come back by a little bit later. Oh, it looks like Jasmine is out today enjoying the Flower and Garden Festival as well. Good to see. I haven't seen Jasmine in quite a while out here. It's very fitting because she's named after a flower. She is named after. That's a good point. She is named after a flower. <laughs> yes, the days of the cavalcades around World Showcase are over. The characters are out. Once again in full force. Made it over to the Japan Pavilion now where the drummers are back. For a while the, the entertainment here was not around but the drummers are back here at the Japan Pavilion. I think I'm also kind of in the mood for some Frushi. Win at Flower and Garden. Not win in Rome, but win at Flower and Garden. Try some Frushi. And there it is in all its glory. Fruit mixed with sushi. It's the style of sushi but it's really fruit on the inside. There is no seaweed in there. There is no fish in there. Only fruit, whipped cream, and a little strawberry flavoring on top. And it's not food and wine festival, but you know, a food festival at Epcot here, you, can't, you always get, you always want to have a trash can, eat on top of a trash can just like this. Hello. Hey. All right, going in. a nice mixture of items down in here. I kind of like it though. I don't know. It's like it's kind of hit or miss with with different flavor palettes, but I like it. And inside the gift shop here they have bonsai tree. 101 essential tips for bonsai. And these rice cakes through here smell really, really good. Quite an assortment of what are these called? Mochi. It's um mochi. It's um rice. So it's just like little like rice, flavored rice? It's like a rice paste, yeah, it's really good. I like the ones that's filled with red bean inside, but they don't have any. Oh, I really like this little mascot here, this potato, this fried potato chip right there. Look at that, oh God. You know what's kind of funny, the other day we saw a gator in the Celebration Pond, and you named the gator Cool yeah, because of the singer from Cool in the Gang who sings the song Celebration. This was unplanned. <laughs> Tonight, late, yeah, well, yeah, later tonight, because today's the 20th, right? Wait, wait, what is today today? Today's the 20th. As a recording of the 21st. Yeah, today's the 21st, Monday the 21st. Cool in the game. That's, what are the that's odds? That's crazy. That's pretty, pretty random. And that's later tonight, but yeah. <laughs> what are the weird odds? It's too bad that Cool, the alligator at Celebration, you deemed him named Cool, the singer of Cool in the Gang, who sings the song Celebration. Yeah. Is not a gator inside this lagoon. We were, we were just wondering, are there gators in here? And over here at Magnolia Terrace, there's a couple. You see anything on here that looks kind of appetizing in any way? Yeah, we got these last the year. The Cajun so Butter good. Grilled Oysters. And they also have, well, I may get the chicken gumbo. A couple other awesome topiaries here. You got Chip and Dale. You got Pluto over here. And not too long of a line for a Magnolia Terrace at this hour. So, gonna get some more chat. Okay, here's the boudin bites. Oysters all the way Okay, let me see this. We got the... Gumbo there, the boudin bites, and there they are in all their glory. So what kind of oysters are these? Grilled. Grilled oyster, any kind of flavoring or just standard grill? Cajun flavored. Cajun flavored, and they give you one of these little tabas Cutest little Tabasco, tabasco, tabasco sauce right there. So this is what we're dealing with right here. These are better than the ones last year. 
pretty good. Yeah, it's cool because yeah, how they shuck them right there. They're super fresh. For $99, you can get a miniature version of these little uh, statues of Figment right there. And it looks as if the Voices of Liberty have moved back inside American Adventure here. For a while, they were... For a while, they were out at the main stage, but they're back inside American Adventure, one of my favorite, favorite shows. I really like this display case, Louis Armstrong. This is a trumpet circa 1964 that was once held and played by Louis Armstrong. Pretty neat. I feel like this is kind of a, I don't say underrated, but underappreciated gem here at the back of World Showcase and Epcot Center. Getting ready to open the doors, about to go in. I highly recommend this. It's kind of an animatronic marvel. Not really allowed to film inside, but I always like to mention how much I, I enjoy it. And all the flags are here. The escalators. What up the escalators? The American Adventure. You know, I should really keep a tally of how many different escalators we've gone through, we've gone on in our day. All the different just things. Today? No, just in general. In of general? Our, the course of our friendship. A friendship? Oh god, is it at least like a thousand and one? A thousand and one escalators. <laughs> Accomplished. Well, if you count the escalator at Universal Studios Hollywood, mm -hmm. the sheer magnitude of it and the level of it, that counts as like 96 el escalators True. all by itself. Okay, there are technical difficulties. They got to the scene where he's walking up the stairs, pretty awesome, and then she came back over the over the microphone and said that they're having technical difficulties. So we only got about five minutes. We only got about five minutes of the American Adventure. I've never had that happen. I've never been evac'd off of the American Adventure before. All right, gonna continue walking around. We're all doing the loop around. We're all showcase. And a quick peek inside the Mexico Pavilion where it always looks like nighttime, even during the day in here. Kind of reminds me a little bit of how, you know, the, the, when you go inside Pirates of the Caribbean and Blue Bayou and all that. Very similar to that type of experience where it's night for day. Not day for night, but night for day. But don't let this fool you. It is still sunny and daytime outside. And before heading in here, noticing that, they, like I said, it's definitely kind of nice to see that there are some familiar topiaries around back again, once again. But I'm also noticing that they've added a few more, like over with Dopey and Snow White. Here's as if they've added in these six other dwarfs as well. Before walking over to the Mexico Pavilion, you got to meet Anna and Elsa oh walking into there. Last time you met Elsa, it was outside. She was standing outside by the tree, but this time you got to get up close and personal and talk to her. Oh How are you God. feeling? I'm still reeling from it. That was so magical. And there was this little girl in front of us who sang Let It Go to Elsa, and that was the most precious thing I've ever seen in it my was entire life. It was, pretty, it was it's, it's pretty awesome to see you so giddy meeting <laughs> Elsa. You, didn't, you wanted to meet Anna, kind of, sort of, but you really wanted to meet Elsa. Yeah, Elsa. Yeah. It's like cool meeting Anna, but Elsa, oh my God. Elsa said she's gonna make you an ice dress? Yeah, because we were talking about outfits, and so she was talking about her, because she's wearing her white dress for the second movie, and then her blue dress, she said that she's gonna make me one too. So you're gonna be wearing an ice dress soon? Yeah, we're gonna match. <laughs> she's just gonna mail it to you? Um, Ship it? Snow flurry it over. Now this is interesting, they have disposable cameras in here too. There's $19 for 16 photos. And gonna get on board a boat for the Grand Fiesta Tour, starring the three Caballeros. And I'm kinda surprised they still have up the little funhouse top style maze through here with the little, this is a very tight squeeze through here. Oh yes, going by the smokestack of the volcano over there. It's always been said that there's a hidden Mickey in the smokestack. You just gotta really look carefully. Okay, we did end up getting a lightning lane. One popped up for Frozen Ever After. So heading in, yeah, I got lucky with Frozen. No luck in for Ratatouille, but this did pop up. So pretty thankful to be, and we're also first row, so can't beat that. Is this supposed to be us? Yeah, I found us as trolls. They're up there, this is the troll version of us. Mm -hmm. Just realized Ratatouille just reopened. It was down for about an hour. 
And right now it says it's only a 60 minute wait, so we ran back over here. And this looks like it could work out. If this is only an hour, that would be pretty awesome. And it seems like even since getting over here, the line has grown considerably even behind where we're standing. Yeah, everyone's, everyone's the news is out that Ratatouille is back open after a couple hours of being closed for a technical difficulty. Now they just made an announcement that it was gonna take a little longer than expected. I don't know if that means the ride went down again or what, but they said it's gonna take a little longer due to unforeseen circumstances. Been waiting probably about 45 minutes, and I'd say maybe halfway in the line to even just get in the door, so a little longer than an hour, but we're in it to win it. But as I stand here thinking of how many times I went by on the Skyliner when this is being constructed, so pretty neat to, pretty neat to think that it is open now for guests to go in. It's been open for a while. This will be my first time, if it happens, be my first time ever going on Ratatouille's Adventure. We're experiencing wait times that are longer than originally anticipated. We apologize for the inconvenience and thank you for your patience. Also noticing the standby wait time is up to 150 minutes now. I think it's been, we've been in line for about 75. All right, after some discussion, decided to go ahead after an hour and 45 minutes, well, we watched a walk, watch through online to see how much more of the queue there was. Kind of guesstimated, it probably took an hour and 45 minutes to get to this point. Such slow moving, probably gonna take another two hours, so we decided just to bail. And after all that, definitely can enjoy some fish and chips. I think the food is one thing, but the sitting down is probably another. We were sit we were in line for an hour and 45 minutes. Pretty much went like not too far. We moved more in the first half hour than we did the last hour and 15. And I, we just pretty much, we cut our losses. I do, I do, I'm not a mathematician. I do not know a lot about the lightning lane. I don't know because the ride was down for two hours prior that the people showing up for the lightning lane. Maybe that's why it was moving so slow, but goodness gracious, this right here sounds a lot more appetizing than waiting in line for Remy's Ratatouille adventure. This right here, this, this is a much better experience. Okay, I got myself a piping hot caffeinated beverage after our fish and chips meal, which is pretty nice. We sat there for probably a good hour. Yeah. <laughs> because we were on our feet for an hour and 45 minutes, not moving. Oh, we heard part of Cool in the Gang. You heard part of Celebration. We heard part of Cool in the Gang off across the way at the American Adventure. But standing for an hour and an hour and 45 minutes and not moving, and then realizing we were not gonna get on Ratatouille in a timely fashion meeting, probably by the end of the night. Now it's a soothing spot here, not the backside of water but the back side of Canada Pavilion. This is the front side of the waterfall. Kind of an unknown gem. Well, not really super unknown, but some might not realize that this is back here, tucked away. And you can walk through the little corridor of rocks there. You can also stand up top and get a better view up there. But you can walk all the way down here, which is really deep. This is beautiful. And Ni Niagara Falls is, there is some on the US side, but also the Canada side. So you were saying maybe this has some symbolism to that. Yeah. I like it back here. This is really neat. And inside one of the gift shops, of course, the Orange Bird looks like to be the mascot of this year's festivities 2022 good old orange bird and also figment as well his figment's winking there and there he is up there holding a basket of fruits and veggies and can't forget about spike the bee here also a mascot they have quite an assortment of mascots this year got some ostriches out here also got sorcerer mickey over there from fantasia right here directing the the broom splashing the water around and with the sun starting to set these are kind of silhouetted out here yeah, nightfall isn't too far away. Oh, so hi, that's, Mark. So that's us waving down there, giving a little wave. But you'll notice also where the reflection of us is waving. Over here, see the bubbling up water? Looks like there's some sort of a sea creature down in the water. Yeah. I'm not really sure exactly why the water is bubbling up like that. But what I'm waiting on is the monorail. Oh, no way. No edit there at all. Perfect timing. There it is. I knew you had a sixth sense about the monorail. You said, you know, so I'm going to go over here and try to get the monorail angle. You go, well, you have a sixth sense <laughs> for all things transportation devices at Disney World, especially the monorail. 
And there it is. And you do. There goes the Monterey. Sea creature down there. Oh wow, here's Timon and Pumbaa over here as well. Kind of tongue. I didn't see them when we first walked in earlier over near the Lion King area. Now I didn't think the butterfly tent would be open this late in the evening, but it is. I thought maybe at five o'clock that they would close, but right now it's like it's almost seven and the butterfly tent appears. Oh, it's it's called Bambi's Butterfly House this year. Because Bambi's here. This is Bambi's Butterfly House. Maybe that's why it's open a little later than former years. In the past, this has always been Go-Go Squeeze is the sponsor, but now Go-Go Squeeze is not the sponsor this year. It's Bambi. This is cool. Yeah, there's like a half a dozen down there. Look at all those fluttering around. That is so cool. And basically, they just have this netting around so the butterflies don't get out because they might head over and try to get on Ratatouille only to be disappointed that they would be waiting and not get on the ride. Now take a look at this pop, whoa, wait a second. I was gonna point out the futuristic popcorn cart. You know how they make miniatures of ride vehicles like monorails and Skyliners? I wish they'd make a miniature of this popcorn cart to purchase. I would purchase this popcorn cart in miniature version. And now inside the land pavilion, I'm glad we waited because earlier the, on the app it showed the wait time for living with the land was pretty lengthy mm -hmm. and wanted us to do lightning lane, suggested to do lightning lane, but right now it's like walk on. It's like 10 minutes. Another gator. Take a look, we are now on another escalator going back out of the land. All right, it is now time to see Figment and Journey to Imagination. Straight ahead, look at that. Look at the sun setting on those clouds over there. Yep, no wait at all. Here come the ride vehicles. And looking back at the sunset from this angle, now as I'm showing it from this angle, I put the camera down on a tripod from the reverse angle on the opposite side of the PVC fountain, upside down fountain over there, and got a, got a good video of us standing along the little railing here with the monorail going back by and Spaceship Earth in the distance. And it worked out well that there was nobody else in the frame. The other guests just, just walked out of frame in order for us to get this, so it worked out perfectly. Pretty dang cool. This one is for posterity. Stopped inside Club Cool now. I'm gonna get the Philippines Royal Watermelon. Which one are you gonna choose? Are you gonna try the Beverly? Probably stay away from the Beverly. Any of these striking uh, striking a little bit of your taste bud fancy? Club Cool, we didn't do Beverly. No Beverly challenge this evening. I've never tried Beverly. I wasn't Stay away, stay away from it. Stay far away. The newly opened and newly renovated and completely different Club Cool than it was on the other side of the former future world. Oh, as we're exiting, holy cow, look at that. I just sat down, what did I say, like 
25 seconds ago. Not even that, literally 10 seconds ago. You just turned the camera, I was like, <laughs> But I said, wouldn't it be neat if the monorail went by? And it did. It just did. You're the monorail whisperer. Monorail whisperer. And there's no way we cannot go on Spaceship Earth to close out the evening. Especially after that just happened, even though we were already planning on doing it anyway. But yeah. We have to thank the Phoenicians. Thank the Phoenicians. The Phoenicians need some thanking. And at this hour, five minute standby. Not too bad. Only a couple rows of folks going in. All right, Spaceship Earth time. <laughs> And that's going to do it for today from Epcot Center. I still refer to it as Epcot Center. My first time visiting this theme park here in 2022. A fun evening. Well, a fun day, a full day. What time did we get here? Like 10. 10 a.m. It is now 9. The park is closed nice at 9 p.m. as we're exiting. Harmonious fireworks are going off. It is a full day. Not quite rope drop to close, but pretty close. Park opened at 8.30 this morning. It's been opening early, but we didn't get here until 10. So 10 to nine, a full day of food, fun, and not getting on Ratatouille. But you know what? We got on Frozen. We got on Frozen and seeing Spaceship Earth all illuminated like this makes the night pretty magical. I'll see you in the next video. The vlog is Wait a second. What the heck? I was doing the voiceover from the parking lot. And there it is. Another magic moment of the monorail going by. There goes the monorail. You want to do the outro? Yeah. I'll see you in the next video. The vlog is over. <laughs>